Here are 10 sets of arguments supporting the claim that Steve Jobs was an intuitive cybernetician and systems thinker vision. Steve Jobs was so intelligent as a child that he skipped a grade in grade school. Although as a youth he had been trained in electronics, he was so inquisitive and intense and had many questions about life that he quit school, sought enlightenment, visited India, and practiced Zen. He dressed very simply, often went barefoot, and fasted a lot. Even after becoming a billionaire, he lived simply, sat on the floor, and his home lacked furniture. Noticeably influenced by Thomas Kuhn's book on paradigmatic change and the structure of scientific revolutions, produced the most famous Super Bowl ad ever based on George Orwell's novel 1984 as the theme for the launching of the Macintosh and its rebellious nature. This is one way in which Jobs reflected his revolutionary stance against the corporate giant IBM and hierarchical management. There were many other instances and speeches about the need to become your own person, do your own thing. In a world being dominated by the mainframe, centralized computers, Jobs championed the idea of one person, one computer. His favorite metaphor was borrowed from the most efficient form of transportation, the bicycle. He adopted the expression personal computer and called it a bicycle for the brain. In cybernetic terms, it is an amplifier of personal human intelligence. From the trivial applications of an Apple II, such as word processing, engineering, and accounting software, to an iPhone 6 and hundreds of apps, we use the iPhone to produce, record, and capture our lives. Jobs adopted the oriental, sin-related, and systemic, holistic way of thinking to everything he did. He gave great attention to detail. He was a perfectionist, and many episodes where his temper flared are related to his absolute rejection of mediocre efforts, solutions, or products. He was an expert in the cost of electronic components and a very tough negotiator which created a competitive advantage for Apple. Although he was trained as an electronics wizard as a youth, after he met Steve Wozniak, he switched his brain to follow his intuitive right side, not the mechanical or linear thinking left side. He considered himself an artist and his products as artistic creations. He thereby could push engineering to the absolute limit in order to achieve artistic perfection also. A case in point, the max font selection capabilities and graphics producing capabilities. A Mac Air is a work of art as much as it is an engineering marvel. Steve Jobs' system view of the world gave him a tremendous advantage over engineers and other linear thinking people in marketing business executives, which have ruled many Fortune 500 companies. For instance, he saw the Apple one and two in a way that Wozniak never saw or cared about. Even after Jobs was fired from Apple, his incursion into Pixar and the next project, literally speaking, became his personal research facilities for his eventual return to Apple. After his triumphant return, he changed the business world's environment in order to realize his dreams and benefit his company to the point of making it the most valuable company on earth. His triumphant return to Apple produced the iMac and the Think Different campaign. Behind his success was a revolution in management that had started after he took over the Macintosh project. His main expertise, he said, was recruiting the right people and placing them in a creative environment. He practiced collective intelligence methods in the design of the Mac. Earlier, 
in his 1979 visit to Palo Alto Research Center, a Xerox facility, he changed history because he saw the future of computing very clearly. He committed Apple to the mouse, the graphics interface, and what later became the overlapping pop-out windows and pull-down menus, which Jeff Rasking and Bill Atkinson had notions about using for the Macintosh project. In contrast, and based on the company's identity as a document copier machine company, the people at Xerox filtered out the tremendous value of their innovations. Jobs, on the other hand, found out how to package them into easy-to-use, beautiful, and highly productive products. He did the right thing done right. Jobs embarked on a lifelong commitment to education, which, from the cybernetic perspective, is the ultimate planning tool for a society and the best amplifier of individual talent and social well-being. Steve was very stingy with his money, but at the same time, not materialized at all. You take none of that when you die, he said. Difference and change are perhaps the two most important cybernetic concepts. Jobs was interested in changing the world, much in the same way as Thomas Alva Edison had done through innovation using computers and later huge networks of computers to harness information and to put to good use a great deal personal empowerment. He was interested not as much on the product or how to make it, but rather on why the product had to exist. This gave every product a sense of being transcendent and gave us a man on a mission. Steve Jobs did not die proud of the drugs he consumed as a teenager and young adult. He is a living proof that drugs cannot produce the natural high that he derived from the satisfaction of changing the world for the better. He sought a harmony with nature that will make him immortal Jobs. If just one person can learn this lesson from this video, that is good enough motivation for me. Thank you for watching and sharing.